Today is Monday, June 22nd, and you're looking at a daily chart of the SPY index. In this video, we're going to discuss headlines from pre-market activities, and we're going to discuss the market activity during the day, and then we're going to look into an analysis to Spirit Airlines, because this stock has been pushed uh, and hyped up lately. And we're going to look at the recent Trump rally on this weekend, last weekend and what can we take from it as a warning to the stock market lastly we're gonna review and conclude with our bull case and bear case for the short term so here we go we started the day and found out some headlines that sparked my interest here's a headline that says Gilead to test inhaled form of anti-covid drug to widen its use We've seen a lot of these headlines, vaccine headlines and treatment headlines. Their impact on the market is evaporating because we've seen many of these headlines before, the vaccine headlines and the treatment headlines. And then within days, they throw cold water on them and we just have to deal with the virus. So I don't put a lot of stock on vaccine or treatment headlines for now. Next, we have a headline from Larry Kudlow. We talked about Kudlow in my last video, uh, that he's a full-time propaganda minister right now. And he's saying that the second wave of coronavirus isn't coming. So apparently he's a doctor now too. And then I saw this headline about the shale oil industry, that a third of the industry is pretty much insolvent. They're basically writing down $300 billion this year and this is heading on the path of bankruptcy and a lot of banks and a lot of lenders that lent the shale oil industry for the last few years are going to get hit hard due to these bankruptcies. Negative news for the economy overall. Here's another headline that I saw in the morning as well. Hertz shares are likely going to zero, Morgan Stanley says. Uh, all I can say is duh, but you're investing in a bankrupt company but certain personalities online hyped up the the stock and basically did a pump and dump for it and unfortunately a lot of younger rookie investors in Robinhood bought the stock they, um, they bought the story they bought the pump part and now they're getting dumped and they're losing their money it's very sad to watch but you can see it in the chart people who own the stock and what an exit they wanted to juice it up before they hit the exit door another headline perhaps the most impactful of the morning about american airlines raising debt about 3.5 billion and this industry also is being hyped by those certain personalities online that there's a story of a comeback to the airline and travel industry even though that these businesses, these airline carriers, were struggling before the pandemic, even with the most favorable conditions like low oil prices, yet you look at their balance sheets and their debt skyrocketing, they cannot service their debts, their margins are shrinking and shrinking. So why would you invest in a company or in an industry that wasn't doing before the crisis hit. What makes you think that it will do better now? And a lot of these clowns started mocking Warren Buffett for dumping his airline stock. I mean, what does he know? He only had 70 plus years of experience in investing. Warren Buffett dumped the airline stocks because he knows how to take a loss and when to take a loss and when to cut your losses and move on. He doesn't believe in the airline industry. The airline industry has changed forever. And these companies, the airline carriers, have a long battle in front of them for survival. The last headline that sparked my attention about the Apple conference that moved online, and here's a headline about virtual conferences and how the, the attendees are surging. And perhaps companies will find out that doing conferences virtually or online is much more efficient that of course if you're a conference town like Las Vegas you're probably shitting your pants right now 
it's just another sign of how the post coronavirus economy would work. Things are moving online and the physical aspect of the economy is being removed. Back to the market, overall a very boring day, a, a low volume day, an up day, not by a, a big margin, but sizably so. We expected a continuation of the downside from last Friday. We had a little bit of that in the future, but it was quickly bought up and the market marched to the upside. Here's a 15 minute chart of the SPY. I'm pointing at the candle where we started the day. Here's the dip. It was quickly bought. Some profit taken in the morning, but more people joining the upside. A little bit of profit taken before the market closed, and then a little dip buying right there. Very slow, very boring, but here's what we take from it. The big technology stocks. Take a look at Microsoft and Apple outperformed the leading the market. Microsoft up by more than almost 3.3% here. Microsoft and Apple are becoming the safe bet, the safe haven in these times. Nobody can predict what's going to happen more than a week or two. It's, it's very difficult to play the market right now. The, the interest rates are low. Where will cash go? It will follow leaders of the market companies with strong balance sheets companies that are growing and have a lot of cash in hand and Apple and Microsoft are the poster boys for companies with great balance sheets and a lot of cash to handle their debt many people are complaining about the valuations for these stocks Microsoft and Apple the valuations don't matter right now because it's just an inflow of cash people want to put their cash investors want to put their cash where it's safe Apple and Microsoft are the safest place to put your cash right now here's a daily chart of Microsoft stock it's a slow moving stock it didn't do a lot it moved up it consolidated in this box right here from 2018 all the way to 2019 it breaks and then it consolidated in this box from 19 all the way closer to the end of the year it breaks and they move parabolically people realize that hey this this company Microsoft is growing largely because it it's becoming a cloud play right now and you see this trend line right here it hugs it like a serpentine it diverges to the upside Diverges and downside, but it keeps hugging. This is the center of gravity of Microsoft, this trend line. And we just recaptured. We knocked out it once, twice, third time, and we finally broke over it. And Microsoft is going to capture this trend line and perhaps consolidate just like it does in its past. Here's Apple stock from a weekly perspective. You can see here, I mean, you can count the red candles, the down weeks on your hand there's only three of them four in this move right here and they're very small the stock just keep getting bought more people want to accumulate a stake in Apple they see there's a long term perhaps a lifetime investment so when you see a dip like this it's immediately bought by new blood new investors who missed on Apple they come in and they accumulate stake in the company and the reason why you see all these green candles and the lack of red candles the reason is it doesn't matter uh, if it's being bought aggressively or not the volume of buying dwarfs the volume of selling even in, in low volume weeks there is no sellers for Apple the holders of Apple see it as a lifetime investment they don't want to sell it even if it, it reaches all-time highs they don't see it as a trading stock where I'm just gonna hold it for a year or two years and sell it they see it as a lifetime investment so the lack of sellers will keep this stock higher and higher when will the sellers arrive in Apple stock perhaps there there is a price I cannot figure what that price would be but there is a price where people say hey I bought the stock in 2016 or perhaps before and I made an insane profit it's time to take it out but every time the sellers arrive in Apple stock there's always buyers on the sidelines waiting and buying accumulated stakes in Apple is there a merit 
to the move that we are now making all-time highs, trading at all-time highs in Apple before the coronavirus? Probably not, because consumer power and consumer spending have increasingly diminished, not just in America, but worldwide. People simply, there are less people who will be able to afford buying and upgrading to a $1,300 iPhone who can afford that in the middle of the recession? So perhaps that's the point where the sellers will arrive aggressively. When they realize that Apple will slow down, they will not be able to sell phones like they used to before. The next thing that caught my attention is the dollar index chart. This is a daily chart of the dollar. Today we had a reversal day. We erased two days of gains. That is significant because that safety trade of the dollar is now being sold, meaning is there confidence in the stock market and more cash that will be deployed into the stock market and therefore the demand of dollars will go down. It's just a one day, one down day, we'll take it as it is, but if it continues to trend lower, that would be a good news for the stock market, bullish news for the stock market. Here is a daily chart on the VIX, the volatility index. This is interesting because it was a big day for the for the VIX, even though it wasn't a huge day on the stock market. Yet the VIX pretty much erased the candle that we gained on Friday. And this is interesting. Will the VIX trend down, continue to trend down, and just break this line where it goes to its normal healthy range? We don't know yet. We're going to see if there's a continuation here. But you know my thesis. My thesis is, and I've I proven that with history of the VIX moves. This is a big primary move. And it cools off. It gathers all this energy to have another aftershock. And this is just too small. This move is too small to be that aftershock. And this is pretty funny because I tweeted that buying the dips on the VIX remains an intelligent strategy for now. And I actually bought the VIX at the end. I added to the position that I have to protect my long-term asset portfolio. However, an hour later, the VIX pretty much collapsed. It went down to 7%. So here's the line of the sand where we stop buying dips on the VIX. If the VIX goes down, closes this gap, breaks the blue line, and start trending to its normal range, then we know that the trade, the fix is not viable. The fix is pretty much the fear is out of the market and there's more euphoria and more uh, confidence in the stock market. So let's talk about the stock for Spirit Airlines because it's becoming a very desirable stock because certain personalities, certain clowns are hyping it online and they're pushing a lot of traders to buy the dips on Spirit Airline and believe in the story that Spirit Airline is the best airline and will recover and it's a great investment to buy Spirit Airlines at these levels. Is there any factual information that we can look at financially to give us an indicator that Spirit Airline is a great catch, is a great investment at this point? We'll look at the facts and I'll let you decide for yourself. Spirit Airlines is the value airline where people get crammed like sardines and fly for a cheaper rate because they don't let you have bags or carry-ons. You have to pay exuberant fees to have carry-ons. And most people who use Spirit Airlines are people who jump, hop in a plane with a backpack and that's it. That's all they need for the destination. So the argument for recovery, and I'll give the crowd, the gambling crowd who are bidding on Spirit Airlines, the benefit of the doubt. They're saying that because of the value element of Spirit Airlines, it is a better investment in the airline industry and will make a quicker comeback than, say, American Airlines or Delta or any of the big old school airlines. And the reason is because the majority of Spirit Airline flights are domestic and the crowd, the passenger demographic is highly younger so they're not at risk group. My counter argument would be look at the data, look at the unemployment levels. It's hitting younger people and people with lower income who are likely to be customers of Spirit harder. 
is Spirit Airlines really healthier financially compared to older airlines like American and Delta and the rest of them. Let's take a look at the facts. Let's take a look at these ratios, very important ratios in the airline industry. The first one is the operating margin. We want to see if Spirit Airlines is it healthy from an operational perspective. And when we look at the operational margin, the most recent one, it's minus seven and a half percent. Okay, you might say this is a pandemic. Of course, their operating margins are going to trend negative. For the last few years, the trend of their operating margin, and it's trending lower. It, the operating margin been trending lower even before the pandemic. This is a company that experiencing shrinking operation margin and profits from its operations even before the pandemic. What makes you think that it will start picking up and do better? The only argument you can make is, oh, the stock is too cheap and I'm not expecting it to go back to where it was before. I'm just looking for a quick profit. That's fine, but it doesn't make this company investable right now. Stop telling people that this is a good investment. It's not. It could be a trading opportunity where you could make up to, to 10, uh, 20, 30, even 50% from bounces, but it's going to be very, very volatile. Take a look at their interest coverage rate. Can they keep up with the debt? Can they pay their interest and their debt and service them with the current operational margins? And when you look at the current interest rate, it's a loss. It's pretty much negative. It's zero. And then you look at their interest coverage historically, the last few years, it's also trending down. This company was all trending already in negative financial wellness way before the pandemic hit. And now all of a sudden, with all the debt that they're taking now, they'll be able to service their interest coverage. They had a debt problem before. What makes you think that more debt will help them out of the hole? It's not. More debt does not compensate for revenue. Let's take a look at the asset test, the quick ratio. Let's see if they can service their, uh, it's a stress test really, if they can service their debt with their current assets minus inventories. They're pretty much at really bad level. When you see the quick ratio at one, that's bad. But this quick ratio is terrible, meaning that the company already has a debt problem. Is the company utilizing its assets intelligently and making profits from it? Where well, we see the current return on investment rate, it's negative one and a half point. And if you look at the return on investment or return on assets historically, the last few years, it's still trending down. Guys, this is a company that's been struggling before the pandemic. It was trending down. It has a lot of negative trends. It wasn't a good investment back then, and certainly not a good investment right now. The last argument that I hear is, hey, passengers are coming back. We're going to start to fly again. You know, we fly in this country. They don't like me. They don't like what I stand for. They don't like you making money. They don't like me making money. They don't like America. They're Al Qaeda, all that. We fly in this country overnight, over and over again. They try to tank us with the airlines. And then we prove that we are too strong, we have an army of traders, and we are buying spirit, and we get it back on top. And we do this dance, we do the tango. The dance is seduction. I'm fine with it. Let's do it again. Okay, ask yourself, is this the right way to make investment decisions? Or is it looking at the facts, the ratios, balance sheets, and making an intelligible investment decision? I think the answer is clear. Here's the, here are the facts. The TSA travel count, when you take this information, you produce a chart and you look at the chart, there is no V-shaped recovery here. It's actually recovering in a slower than anticipated rate. There are a lot of aspects of the economy that had a V-shaped recovery, at least for now. Airlines are certainly not one of them. People are still terrified of flying companies will not fly their employees anymore. The flying business, the airline business, is not what it used to be before. It's going to change forever. The changes are not going to be positive. Moving on to our next subject. Of course, by now, you've heard about the Trump rally in Tulsa over the weekend that failed to produce the anticipated number of crowds. 
There is something important to extract from the attendance of the rally and what that could signal to the stock market and to the overall economy. Here are the expectations of the rally. They expected over 1 million people, or they had, they say that they had over 1 million register for the event. Of course, the arena can only contain 19,000. Only 6,000 showed up, so that was a big failure. And they're blaming TikTok users and teens for pranking the administration. However, the way I see it, is even Trump supporters are being very cautious about gathering in large crowds. Even Trump supporters are fearful of the virus. I mean, this is the crowd that you'd expect to be the most skeptical of the virus and of wearing masks. In polls that have been done, Republicans are more skeptical of the second wave, more skeptical of the effectiveness of masks, are more skeptical of the danger of the virus overall. So to see them cautious about attending a rally is really, really interesting and send a signal to the stock market and the economy that our overall population is still fearful about the virus. There might have been an initial peak of activity when states reopen, but most people are still fearful and still cautious about the virus. Therefore, their consumer habits spending is not going to pick up in the V-shaped recovery that's being sold to us by the administration and by a lot of quote-unquote experts. The overall consumer behavior will remain cautious and fearful of going out and consuming like it used to be before the pandemic hit. When you look at companies like the airline industry, the live event industry, casinos and entertainment and even ride-sharing businesses. This is a grim indicator to these industries that people are still fearful of going out. The pain, the economic pain in these industries will likely continue for a longer term than expected, meaning that we can poke holes into the theory that the economy will recover in a V-shape and therefore the stock market's recovery is justified. This could be another warning signal that the stock market has to correct because the economy will not recover in a V-shape. Once the V-shape theory starts to crumble and collapse, the stock market will have to correct. Back to the stock market and what we see this week and going forward. Here's a chart, daily chart for the SPY. The bullish case goes that this was a dip no different than any other dip that we've seen uh, here and here and uh, of course the mother of all dips but until and unless we close above these levels will we where we reverse on a weekly basis I'm still bearish I want to see the market close above these levels and maintain a solid close above them because that would tell me that the market will march and challenge all-time highs and beat all-time highs. However, the longer we struggle to make that close, the weekly close above these levels here, the more likely that we're going to start trending to the downside. And here's the bearish uh, case going down and closing this gap right here at 286. After all, this level was a consolidation level where the market took a break, gathered more buyers, and marched to the upside. It's only logical that if we drop in the market that we will stop and review and reflect on the market from these levels here, specifically 286. So the bull case closing this gap and closing above it weekly basis. The bear case is going back and revisiting this consolidation area. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, share, and like. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter.